A major energy storage facility in Monterey Bay is now online. Ariana Jaza reports it's com it comes from a partnership between PG&E and Tesla. Moss Landing, now home to two energy storage facilities. So it really is making the Monterey Bay this sort of hub of battery energy storage around the world. On Monday, PG&E announced their Tesla Megapack battery is online and now considered to be one of the largest utility owned lithium ion battery storage systems in the world. And this system is really intended to help integrate renewable energy resources onto the grid, such as solar. So the system takes advantage of renewable energy sources and stores that energy to be used when demand goes up. That's goal number one. In 2023, Tesla's Megapack venture, dedicated to large-scale battery energy storage, saw its business more than double. With expansions in progress in Lathrop, California, and Shanghai, expectations are high for continued growth in the coming years. This prompts a pivotal question. Just how extensive could Tesla's Megapack business become, and when might this peak occur? To explore this, let's delve into the potential evolution of battery energy storage adoption from now until 2050, examining the possible market size at each phase and Tesla's potential market share. But hey, before we dive into the details, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to Tesla Stock News. With that said, let's get this video started. Turning to Tesla's projections, after their investor day, they released a white paper titled Master Plan Part 3, Sustainable Energy for All of Earth, estimating that the US alone would need about 6.5 terawatt hours of eight hour lithium ion storage to transition to renewable energy. This estimate provides a broad view of the potential maximum battery requirement, although it stops short of predicting specifics about timelines or likelihoods. The term eight hour lithium ion storage appears to use an eight hour duration as a unit of measure to depict the amount of energy stored and released, which translates to 815 gigawatts of power for a total of 6.5 terawatt hours of energy. This duration does not necessarily reflect the duration rating that most grid storage batteries are expected to have. To provide more detail on the timeline and storage durations, let's consider forecasts from the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. NRL anticipates that U.S. grid storage deployment supporting renewable energy will unfold in four phases up to 2050. As these phases advance, storage durations are expected to extend. This is due to the need for more extensive grid storage as the energy grid increasingly relies on intermittent sources like wind and solar, which require substantial reserves to manage demand spikes or supply shortages. Longer storage durations, while beneficial for grid stability, face economic challenges. They offer fewer revenue opportunities due to slower charge and discharge rates and incur ongoing costs such as maintenance, property taxes, and financing. Despite these challenges, the cost of energy storage is expected to decrease, driven by economies of scale and technological advancements, allowing for the eventual deployment of longer duration storage projects. Although NRL's detailed phases offer more insights than Tesla's broad estimate, they lack specific years for phase deployment, the types of technologies to be used, and they measure capacity and gigawatts of power without specifying gigawatt hours of energy. For a better grasp of the intended applications, each phase has been tagged with a primary grid service. Phase one focuses on operating reserves like frequency regulation to stabilize the grid. Phase two is dedicated to peaking capacity, aimed at replacing gas-powered peaker plants. Phase three targets time shifting to balance load over a 24-hour period, while phase four, dubbed renewables firming, will address the deeper reserves necessary for transitioning to renewable energy sources. In terms of deployment timelines, it's anticipated that longer duration storage options will gain traction as costs become more competitive. Alongside the timeline, a cost analysis per kilowatt hour is crucial. A pivotal moment occurred in 2020 when industry average cell prices for four hour battery storage hit $120 per kilowatt hour. Though this figure doesn't encompass total installation costs, it's posited that eight hour and 12 hour storage solutions will become economically feasible when cell costs drop to $60 and $40 per kilowatt hour, respectively, due to their reduced revenue opportunities within given timeframes. Conversely, the economics of storage under one hour operate on different principles, often priced by power capacity rather than energy capacity. For phase one's operating reserves, this translated to a cell price threshold of $480 per kilowatt hour, reached between 2013 and 2015. Looking ahead, lithium iron phosphate, 
LFP battery cells are expected to fall to $60 per kilowatt hour in the coming year in China, signaling the start of phase three. By 2030, prices are forecasted to dip below $40 per kilowatt hour, potentially ushering in phase four, although it remains to be seen if lithium ion batteries will meet this target. Alternatively, sodium ion batteries might step in to fill this gap. These estimations set the stage for a 20 year window of storage deployment, providing insights into the timing and overlap of phases as the energy sector moves towards renewable sources. This framework not only helps understand when specific storage durations may become viable, but also underscores the economic dynamics shaping this critical transition. Notably, NRL indicates that by 2050, 12 hour storage will predominantly come from existing pumped hydro facilities showing no expected growth from 2020. Contrary to this, I anticipate that by 2040, ion-based battery technologies will dominate the 12-hour storage market, driving growth thanks to significantly reduced prices. The estimations start with 64 gigawatts for phase one, scaling up to 320 gigawatts for phases two and three, and finally 106 gigawatts for phase four. These figures are chosen based on the expectation that battery prices will decrease over time, accelerating the transition to renewable energy. This is like, if for people that really know cells, this is a massive breakthrough. For cylindricals to be able to, to get rid of the tabs, dramatically simplifies winding and coating, yeah. and has an awesome thermal and performance benefit. Yeah, um, that's a, just to be so, elaborate on that a bit, it's like when the cell is, is going, going through the, the, the system, the system it, it has to keep stopping where all the tabs are. Yes. So you can't do a, continu you can't do a continuous motion uh, uh, production uh, if you have tabs, you have to keep stopping. And, and then there's a rate at which you can start and stop and accelerate again, and, and it really slows down the, the rate of production. And then sometimes you get the tabs wrong, um, and you also get lose a little bit of, of, of active area. It's, it's, it's really a huge pain in the ass to have tabs um, yes. from a production standpoint. Yes. These gigawatt capacities, when multiplied by their respective durations, translate into 64 gigawatt hours for phase one, 1 1.28 terawatt hours for phase two, 2.56 terawatt hours for phase three, and 1.28 terawatt hours for phase four, totaling 5.18 terawatt hours. To align these figures with Tesla's estimate of 6.5 terawatt hours for the US, adjustments are made to convert the energy storage figures into their eight hour equivalents. For example, a battery with a four hour discharge duration cycles twice as quickly as one rated for eight hours, effectively doubling its energy throughput. Applying this logic, the 5.18 terawatt hours adjust to approximately 6.472 terawatt hours, closely matching Tesla's projection. Moving on to battery life, the forecast takes into account the expected service life of batteries at different storage durations. Service life estimates range from 10 years for one hour storage up to 30 years for 12 hour storage. These figures are largely based on educated guesses and factors like Tesla's 20 year warranty for their megapacks. Acknowledging that battery life is influenced by more than just cycle life, including exposure to environmental conditions. The required annual production capacity to sustain this deployment is calculated by dividing the total energy by the expected service life of the batteries, resulting in annual needs of 6.4 gigawatt hours for phase one, 64 gigawatt hours for phase two, 102 gigawatt hours for phase three, and 43 gigawatt hours for phase four in the US alone. According to the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, NREL, by 2050, 12-hour energy storage will largely rely on existing pumped hydro facilities with no anticipated growth from 2020. However, I predict a shift by 2040, where ion-based battery technologies are expected to take the lead in the 12-hour storage market, driven by significant reductions in price. The projections begin with 64 gigawatts allocated for phase one, escalating to 320 gigawatts for phases two and three, and concluding with 106 gigawatts for phase four. These figures are predicated on the assumption that battery costs will continue to decrease, thereby hastening the transition to renewable energy. When these capacities are multiplied by their respective durations, the result is 64 gigawatt hours for phase one, 1 1.28 terawatt hours for phase two, 2.56 terawatt hours for phase three, and 1.28 terawatt hours for phase four, cumulatively amounting to 5.18 terawatt hours. To align with Tesla's estimated need of 6.5 terawatt hours for the US, these figures are recalculated into their eight hour equivalents. For instance, batteries rated for four hour discharge can cycle twice as rapidly as those set for eight hours, essentially doubling their energy output. 
This recalibration brings the total to about 6.472 terawatt hours, closely aligning with Tesla's projections. The analysis also considers the expected service life of these batteries, varying from 10 years for one hour storage to 30 years for 12 hour storage. These estimates, though speculative, consider factors beyond mere cycle life, such as exposure to extreme temperatures and harsh weather conditions, reflecting Tesla's up to 20 year warranty on their mega packs. The annual production capacity required to support this infrastructure is determined by dividing the total energy by the battery's expected service lives, resulting in annual needs of 6.4 gigawatt hours for phase one, 64 gigawatt hours for phase two, 102 gigawatt hours for phase three, and 43 gigawatt hours for phase four within the US. Expanding this model to a global scale and considering Tesla's projection of 46.2 terawatt hours of lithium ion batteries needed worldwide, we apply similar phase distributions and timelines. This global perspective emphasizes the extensive role that battery technology will play in facilitating the worldwide shift to renewable energy, highlighting its profound impact on future energy strategies. There are two primary concerns at the forefront. The first involves the logistical hurdles of connecting megapacks to the grid, compounded by transformer shortages. Wood McKenzie has noted that these issues have led to delays in about 80% of the projects slated to come online. The resolution and trend of these challenges remain uncertain, making them a potential focus for a future video in this grid storage series. The second risk pertains to the supply of batteries. Tesla heavily relies on prismatic LFP battery cells, primarily sourced from companies like Cattle. This dependence poses a strategic risk that could impede growth. Although rumors suggest Tesla is setting up its own production of prismatic LFP cells in Nevada using Cattle's spare equipment, scaling up to a significant level is expected to take years. Additionally, Tesla's 4,680 cells, currently utilizing a nickel chemistry and still in the early stages of production, may not be ideally suited for grid storage applications. So, how many megapack factories will Tesla build? Based on today's discussions, if each megapack factory maintains a production capacity similar to the 40 gigawatt hours at the Lathrop template factory, and Tesla aims to deploy between 229 to 535 gigawatt hours annually, we could see the construction of 6 to 13 megapack factories within the next 5 to 10 years. For context, Tesla currently consumes about 150 gigawatt hours of battery cells annually across all products. If grid storage maintains comparable profit margins, Tesla could potentially increase its market capitalization by 350% from grid storage hardware alone over the next decade. It sure is a brain-packed update from Tesla. So if you enjoyed this content, make sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to Tesla Stock News. Thank you for watching and see you in our next videos.